Hello everyone, this is my seven round NFL mock draft for the Los Angeles Chargers using PFF Simulator. Uh, one quick thing I want to mention before we start is that I noticed on a lot of my videos that people are only watching for the first two or three minutes of the video. So I'm going to change up the style and this is going to be different than uh, any of my previous videos by a little bit stylistically. Okay, let's jump right in. Now, uh, with the Los Angeles Chargers, of course, the big need for them is uh, quarterback and offensive line. Now, uh, the rest of the roster is actually really, really good. It's like a top 10 roster in the NFL. It's just, unfortunately, right now, with losing Phillip Rivers and uh, that offensive line continually being uh, injury-prone and just not playing or... Uh, throwing a lot of uh, draft and resources at it, but just never getting it up to even like an average level, unfortunately isn't quite good enough right now. So what I did with the 14th pick, I ended up trading back. I'll talk about that trade uh, later, but with my first uh, selection, I took Josh Jones. He's a tackle out of um, Houston, and I really like him a lot. I think he's one of the uh, better, he, he's a top 15 prospect to me. He's amazing in pass production. He's got a really, like, he doesn't give up a ton of pressures. He's just really, really solid, and he's he's worth uh, a, a top 15 pick, certainly, in my mind. And he uh, he's a left tackle. You have Balaga already on the right side, so you need a left tackle now, and Josh Jones fits fits that to a T. Werfs or Dredrick Wills, I don't like them so much because they're right tackles, and you have to convert them over to left tackle, and there's always a bit of risk involved with that. So let's move on to a couple more picks. At 37, I took Denzel Mims, wide receiver, out of Baylor. And 45, I took Noah Igbenogany, cornerback, Auburn University. Now, you might say, why am I taking a wide receiver and a cornerback? Aren't those both strengths of the of the Chargers? And I'd have to agree. They, they, uh, the Chargers do have really good weapons for wide receivers, and they have really good cornerbacks. But the thing is, is that um, uh, Mike Williams is still kind of unknown, and I think you can kind of, not unknown, but I think you can upgrade on him, and I feel like Mims is an upgrade, especially at 37, because I think he's a, a first-round caliber player, so that's an upgrade there, I feel. And then Igbenogany at 45, honestly, there wasn't another player that I liked at all at that at that. Um, as a fit for the Chargers because the Chargers have so little needs. What am I going to go with an offensive guard there maybe? But like 45 is kind of rich, I think, for this draft. You can get some later if you really needed an offensive guard. So I, tr I took the, the most talented player uh, that I felt uh, was on the board at the time, and that was Igbenogany. I really like his uh, man coverage ability. I don't know if he really fits into the Chargers scheme so much. If they're going to play a lot of off zone, then maybe it's kind of a, a doo-doo pick there then. But I, I don't know. I, I just I think sh just maintaining that amazing cornerback play, that amazing secondary play is really, really important for uh, the Chargers to have some sustained success. And then I want to jump down to the middle rounds where you see I took two quarterbacks one after another. At 112 and 151, I took Anthony Gordon, uh, quarterback out of Washington State, and then I took Josh Love, uh, quarterback out of San Jose State. Both these guys I love for different reasons. Anthony Gordon is another um, uh, Washington State product that uh, under Mike Leach, uh, he, he just he, he he's able to process plays at a high level because he just looks at where all the players are and looks where the advantages is or where the numbers advantage is and goes in that direction. And I think that's part of the reason why Gardner Minshew from last year for the Jaguars was able to process and be a good player because of uh, part of that is because of Mike Leach and the system that's run at Washington State. And you look at Anthony Gordon, he makes a lot of um, uh, good he processes well, and then he makes the right play quick, uh, quick, uh, quick thinking. Now, the thing with him is that he's not 
the greatest when it comes to downfield uh, throwing. He doesn't throw the ball down the field a ton, so that's a bit of a concern. So enter Josh Love, who is amazing at throwing the ball down the field. His his deep ball accuracy is uh, it doesn't rival Joe Burrow's because Joe Burrow's accuracy is through the roof and the the best accuracy QB product. There's been for a number of years, but I would say uh, I'd, I'd go out on a limb and say he's the second best uh, deep thrower in this draft. I mean, I think he's up there maybe in that regard, almost up to like a Tua level because Tua really doesn't, I mean, Tua throws certain routes well down the field, but he doesn't, but because of his lack of arm strength, which Tua does have, he lacks that arm strength. He doesn't always throw, he, there's certain throws that he leaves on the table, per se. And I think Josh Love is better than Tua in, in that specific regard. I'm not saying overall as a prospect, but I mean specifically in that regard. And throwing a deep, accurate ball is very, very valuable nowadays. Now, I skipped over Troy Dye, number 71, linebacker over Oregon. I think he's a solid player. He's he's going to be a good coverage guy and at least an average uh, player against the run. Uh, I felt like that off-ball linebacker in the middle is one spot that's a little weaker for the defense. And I think it's not horrible to address it there to get a player like Troy Dye. I think that'll certainly uh, strengthen the Chargers roster. And then finally, the last two picks were Joe Reed, wide receiver out of uh, Virginia, and then there's John Pinacini, defensive tackle out of uh, Utah. And both of these players are just depth, depth, uh, you know, with wide receiver. I don't love taking another wide receiver there, but he's the best player for the... for. for he was the best player that was available at that time, I felt. So I just said, F it, I'll just take him. And then John Pinacini, they could use some detect, detect, defensive tackle uh, depth and help uh, help out that um, competition there. So the later round picks, once you get past 150, really, uh, I don't feel like players are that much different on a tier basis than maybe something like an undrafted free agent. So... Uh, what I look at with these later round guys is I just turn on the tape and go, does he suck or not? And if they don't suck, I'm like, okay, he looks okay-ish, then I'm going to feel more comfortable with that player than any of the guys that I do watch the tape with. And I go, yeah. Uh, if I get that feeling, then I don't even want to draft that guy. Okay, the last part of this is the trade that I made. I moved back from 6 down to 14, and I picked up the 45th pick. I trade with the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. I think this is a fairly realistic uh, pick, uh, dropping back about 8 selections in the first round from the top 10 into the the middle, nearly at uh, from 6 to 14, and picking up 45. It might be... Uh, I think it's a it's a fair and realistic trade on uh, for both sides, so I have no real qualms or issues with that. Uh, I just want to summarize at the end and give a, a few quick notes. First of all, this has been a GM mock draft, so this is a draft that where the players and positions I select. If I were the uh, if I was Tom Telesco, if I was actually the real GM. Of the Chargers. I'm not trying to in any way predict what Tom is going to do. I have no idea what they're going to do and neither do you or anyone else really. And then uh, just just to summarize, uh, I felt like off left tackle and quarterback were the two primary needs and then also uh, for the Chargers, really important for them to get that. So I took two quarterbacks and then the first pick was one of the top-rated left tackles in this draft. So I felt like I addressed those needs really well for the Chargers. And then also I gave them secondary uh, depth with the cornerback Igbenogany, and then I gave them wide receiver depth with Joe Reed and then Denzel Mims. And then Pinacini and Dye were just more players that I felt like 
you know, they could, uh, die can come in and start and be a, at least a slight upgrade potentially over what they have there. And Pinasini is a co competition and depth pick. Okay. Thank you very much. It's been 10 minutes and that's the length of the videos that I'm looking to uh, make in the future now. Make a bit of uh, uh, shorter videos. If you made it the whole way through, I give you a handshake and say thank, thank you very much. Okay, well you have a great day. Bye bye.